This is the 15 inch MacBook Air. It's literally the 13 inch MacBook Air, but wider for everyone who likes reading at 125% text size. You know who you are. That being said, this screen size actually pushes the MacBook Air into new territory the big laptop space. So let's talk about it in a little review. The 15 inch MacBook Air comes with a color matched MagSafe cable to charge it and the 35 watt dual USB-C charging brick is actually standard on this model. This charging brick leaves you with an extra port to charge other devices along with the laptop. You can get this laptop with a faster 70 watt charger, but that removes the second port. The best of both worlds option here is to actually go third party, like with this Ugreen or Anchor USB-C charging brick that gives you similar speeds, but has extra reports for your other devices. Beyond that, there's not much to say about this 15 inch MacBook Air. Physically, it's a 13 inch MacBook Air, but bigger. It still has the same design. It has the same MagSafe port and the same two Thunderbolt four ports. It has the same keyboard, the same webcam, and the same color options. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Those are all things that make the 13 inch Air so great. The design makes it thin, and the MagSafe port actually gives you an extra sense of security that you won't rip your laptop to the floor. Which is nice, because the MacBook Air line of laptops are pretty slippery even with their rubber feet. The keyboard is good, the webcam is all right, and the color options are a nice touch. Something to know about the midnight color though, and something I experienced on the 13 inch MacBook Air, is that it's a fingerprint magnet. And over time, the finish around the ports do rub off, revealing a silverish metallic looking color underneath. It's still the best looking color in my opinion, but just something to keep in mind. But before we continue talking about the rest of the features of the 15 inch MacBook Air, what about a good desk for the 15 inch MacBook MacBook Air. Well, today's sponsor can help. FlexiSpot's E7 standing desk is an affordable, super customizable standing desk. You can choose between a bunch of different sizes, desk surfaces, frame colors, orientations, and desk accessories. The one I have right here is their E7 standing desk with a white desk frame and rubber wood top. This desk comes with a lot of really cool features built into it, like programmable buttons that let you lock the height from tampering, save your desired height presets, and there's even a USB port right next to the controls to charge your devices. The E7 can actually hold up to 355 pounds. I'm a pretty big guy, and the E7 was able to lift me all the way up. However, it did not solve my fear of heights. It's super stable even when typing at standing height with minimal wobble. I'm a huge fan of standing desks, and having the ability to just stand and get some body movement in while working has been absolutely fantastic. FlexiSpot even has a sale ongoing right now. So if you're in the market for an affordable standing desk, check out FlexiSpot at the link in the video description below. Now, back to the video. There are some key differences between the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs. You can actually narrow it down on just one hand. The screen is bigger, the battery is bigger to account for that bigger screen. It has better speakers, it comes with a 35 watt dual port power brick, and it comes with a 10 core GPU standard compared to the 13 inches eight core GPU. So it's also just slightly faster than its smaller sibling. That's it. But if those are the only differences, how is it in day-to-day -day life? Performance wise, it is nearly identical to the 13 inch Air. It's snappy at your standard tasks like web browsing, watching YouTube videos, writing documents, viewing PDFs, you name it. It can handle some light video editing in Final Cut Pro, and I can edit photos just fine in Affinity with no noticeable stuttering. Overall, it's been pretty solid. It behaves exactly what you would expect out of the M2 chip inside of it. That's good, so let's talk about the 15 inch screen size and the speakers. The larger screen size makes it so much easier to multitask with just the laptop's display. On the 13 inch Air, I felt it was much harder to consistently have two apps open at once, but with this 15 inch Air, I had multiple apps open more often. It was also nicer for watching videos and the speakers sound really good. I've been spoiled by good MacBook speakers and it makes it hard to listen to other laptops. The one on the 15 inch is no exception. The speakers sound great, even better than the 13 inch. Despite having a bigger body and a bigger overall battery size, the battery life itself felt very similar to the 13 inches. The port situation is also exactly like the 13 inch MacBook Air. It's all on the left side, except for the lonely headphone jack on the right hand side. This laptop also only supports one external monitor in conjunction with this laptop's internal display. But because the screen is big, it makes a perfect single external monitor companion with plenty of usable space on that 15 inch display to use as a secondary monitor. So there are quite a few ways that this laptop is just plain better, but at the trade-off of size. But 
is size really a negative? I have with me three laptops that people might be comparing to this 15 inch Air to. The 13 inch Air, 14 inch MacBook Pro, and 16 inch MacBook Pro for that giant screen size. Out of all of these, my main machine has actually been the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And despite having a smaller screen size than the 15 inch MacBook Air, it actually weighs more than the 15 inch MacBook Air. And you can really feel it when they're both in your hand, especially with how dense the 14 inch MacBook Pro is. The 15 inch Air is really thin and light for a 15 inch laptop. The 16 inch Pro is, it's heavy at around four and a half pounds, but because the 15 inch Air isn't using the beefier processors and chunkier battery and fancier features of the higher end Pro Max like this one has, the 15 inch MacBook Air has very little fat. So despite being large, it just feels like an oversized tablet in your hand and doesn't feel super heavy in my backpack. But because the 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pros weigh more and are denser, you can definitely feel their weight when you pull them out or use them. But when you just compare the two MacBook Air models, the 15 inch feels slightly heavier, but you do actually notice all that extra width. Between all four of these machines, obviously the 13 inch Air feels the nicest, but the second best to feel in the hand and carrying around has to go to the 15 inch air. It really is like the best of both worlds. It's big, but also relatively light. Also, it's just so much nicer to chill on the couch with this lightweight big screen laptop versus a smaller, denser laptop with more performance. It also makes it really easy to get some on the go multitasking in. The only complaint I can think of for a laptop of this screen size is it doesn't do well in cramped spaces like airplane seats where you might not have enough space for this bigger laptop. And at that point, the 13 inch Air makes much more sense or the 14 inch Pro. So why a 15 inch MacBook Air now? Well, if you look at Apple's lineup, the only other large screen laptop is the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is much more thick, offers a ton more performance and is heavier on the wallet. So that machine actually appeals to a very small amount of people compared to the 15 inch Air. This 15 inch Air performs how a regular person expects their computer to run at and is almost half the price of that 16 inch Pro. I like to think that this 15 inch Air will be super popular with people because of a theory that I personally have. People like thick. Smartphones are slowly growing to what used to be tablet territory and tablets, well, they've grown to be laptop sized. And because everything beneath it has been growing in size, so should the laptops that they sell, right? Despite numerous videos and comments on YouTube about how much YouTubers and YouTube commenters love small tech, me included, regular consumers really do seem to like big tech. So Apple now sells a MacBook Air and a MacBook Air Plus at a pretty competitive price. Kind of like how they have those two iPhone sizes for each of their iPhone tiers between the iPhone and iPhone Pro. So then, should you get the 15 inch MacBook Air? You can see that most of the good things that I have to say about this 15 inch laptop are already in the smaller 13 inch brother. And that's true. The M2 MacBook Air 13 inch is a really compelling value, especially at its new $1,100 price tag. But what this 15 inch Air provides is much larger. The larger display is better for multitaskers, media consumption, and makes the one external monitor limitation more bearable and be a better on the go machine too. If I was looking for a MacBook right now, I think I'd personally look at the 15 inch Air first since I can see myself using all that extra screen real estate. So if you're that type of person who constantly multitasks on the go, instead of focusing on a single task at a time, then start at this 15 inch Air. Or if you care more about portability and are willing to dock your laptop to a desk, when you need extra screen real estate, save $200, get the 13 inch Air instead. Either way, I think this 15 inch MacBook Air is a great addition to the lineup and it's gonna be a super popular option for the non-video editing, coding, photo editing, more productivity based users. Anyway, what do you personally think? Is a larger screen and higher price tag worth buying the 15 inch over the 13 inch? Or do you prefer the portability? Are you gonna get this machine? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.